Jason. Welcome to episode seven of the Wonder Appreciated Podcast. I could do a really cool, deep voice, and I need you to know that I can do it. Ready? I can do one of those um, slowed and reverb songs. Give me like a song. Do that like, I guess you wonder where I've been. I guess you wonder where I've been. I could do the I could do the instrumentals. I could do anything. <laughs> Wonder appreciated. <laughs> this is so dumb. What? Wonder appreciated. This is ba- down to the basic monkey brain. Okay. Okay. A funny face. Now let me explain. <laughs> Just a funny face. <laughs> Whoa! What kind of face? Any like. An unexpected funny face is so welcome <laughs> to me. I love it when someone's just Whoa. like, <laughs> like any face, <laughs> like if you make any stupid funny face. If it's across the room, especially if you're at a party and it's, you catch your buddy's eye from across the room, stand still, straight up, and just look at him and make a funny face. <laughs> I tell you right now, it's actually funny. It's funny because it's like, that's stupid. <laughs> that's, yeah. So it's kind of anti-humor. But it's also funny because sometimes the faces are surprising enough to where you can get a little bit of a rise out of me. If you you've never I mean? seen them make that face before, never like, seen like whoa, that that's face. a new face. That's a good one. That's, that's a, a good, good face. one. Funny faces <laughs> are underrated, wonder appreciated, okay? Little wonder. Little wonder. We do it to babies. Okay, let's put it this way. <laughs> when my niece was an infant, like people would go up to her and be like, oh, booga, booga, booga. And I would laugh at their faces. <laughs> Notice the next time someone makes a stupid face to a baby and the baby's laughing, you're not laughing because the baby's laughing. You're laughing because that was actually kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> can't tell if this is wonder appreciated or just like an embarrassing fact about me. I can't tell. <laughs> when someone's like, blah. Or like, <laughs> it's like, mom, what are you doing? That's so funny. <laughs> it is really silly. Do it to your Amazon delivery guy. Next time you gotta <gasps> open the door with a peekaboo. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> that's, I like that face. Oh, for the listeners out there, I I did a little a little Please Popeye. Did. What was your favorite thing to lie about when you were seven years old? <laughs> I lied a lot when I was little. Yeah? Yeah. What was like the biggest lie that you never got caught saying? Like something you went to your grave with that still remains to this day. Everyone thinks it's true. I would get caught every time. Really? I don't think ahead. I'm not like a planner at all. I'm totally off the cuff. So I would just get really scared and lie and then just get caught instantly and get in trouble. Everything I would lie about would be like food related. So it would be like, oh, well, they said I could have this popcorn. You're like, what the heck? I (laughs) didn't even know that it was supposed to be. I wouldn't even try to get out of it. If I got in trouble, I'd be like, well, um, uh, and you start crying. (laughs) (laughs) You <laughs> ah. Dude, I think baby crying as an adult is really funny to me. <laughs> I mean, in a situation where you can't get out of it and going, <laughs> that's wonder appreciated. <laughs> I, I want baby crying to get out of a baby situation. Baby cry, like someone's towing my car because it was parked in the wrong spot. <laughs> I can't, I have a. <laughs> what would you do? Um, better luck next time, pal. <laughs> like, he's gonna feel so dumb. He's gonna be like, I'm not gonna be mean to this baby. I should have done that when I got a, when I got a ticket. Everything in my universe brought me to getting in trouble. Like, I would never get away with anything, ever. Never. Wow. Never. I was not good enough at it. Like, I would, I wanted to do bad things, but I was so bad at covering my tracks. Okay, I feel kind of bad. So <laughs> I would always get away with stuff because my track record was great. I The teachers loved me. Mm. I had a lot of reputation built up to where there wasn't much I could do. That is just, yeah. wow, that's sinister. Yeah, so <gasps> Whoa. I remember one time we were playing the game. We'll just bleep it. The game where you say a bad word and you continually try to say it louder. Yeah. Yeah. So, 
and then you'd like hide. I would sit sit behind this kid that was like, a, he's a good friend of mine. And I would just say things like, Pain. and I would just be pretending to work. <laughs> and he and, would get in trouble. And he huh? would easily, and he'd be like, I, and he wouldn't narc on me because he was a good dude. So he'd be like, <laughs> first of all, that wasn't me. <laughs> it was someone around me, probably. It wasn't me. And they'd be like, who was it, Joe? And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> was it Joe? Come on, Justin. Get to. How would they not know by your face, though? I feel like you got a little. No, a I would. Grin. I'd be scared. I'd be scared. Like Are I would. You I would actor? never. I'd be like, oh my god, he's getting in trouble. My friend's getting in trouble. <laughs> I feel so bad for my friend. For what has he done? <laughs> <laughs> As he's walking out. <laughs> I've always envied Sabrina, the teenage witch, because of her Salem? cat. Yeah, because what a homie he is. Oh, I mean, yeah. come on. When I look at Salem, and he's at the window, and he's like, so what's good? <laughs> and then she's like, well, today kind of sucked. Like, having a therapist that's a cat I is know, sick. And I know. And also can help. Like, like, he knows a lot more than he was yeah. wise. Yeah. yeah. Which brings me to my next point. I feel people aren't envious enough of Stuart Little's life. What do you say? Want to be friends? All right. Honestly, I'm so here for this. <laughs> okay. Can I tell you that I am more here for this than any you wonder appreciate a topic that you've brought up before? And trust me, I I came loaded. I am lasered. Think about it. He has all of the privileges a human would have with none of the risk. So he can do cuz everyone treats him like a guy. Uh -huh. He's a little dude. So he can go into the bank Anytime totally. he wants. And he's like, oh, can I deposit? And they'll be like, oh, he's Stuart Little. He's like, eight bucks. Here you go. Like, <laughs> And they'll just give it to him because he's Stuart Little and he's a mouse. And he's not supposed to be talking. Yeah. But he also gets the benefits of being an animal. He has a nice car. He lives in a nice house. He has a he nice has family. He has a car. He has a nice car. Yeah. He has a convertible car. I don't know why I thought about this the other day, but I just, th this idea came to me because I was like, what if I was Stuart Little? <laughs> okay, this is so weird. Oh my gosh. What if Were I was, you other kidding? I was thinking, was I other kidding as Stuart Little? <laughs> <laughs> Joe. So I, I'm in my car and I was listening to uh, that SZA Phoebe Bridgers song. I need humanity. That's on. Yes. And I was like <laughs> laughing in my own head, thinking about Stuart Little driving on the sidewalk, listening to that song. <laughs> he has all the support anyone could ask for. In <laughs> the terms best of parents. Everyone wants him to be, wants him to win because he's a mouse and that's better like than <laughs> not being a mouse. That's more interesting. So he has, he has the cuteness thing. He has the cuteness thing. Mm -hmm. He's fitted. So let's just start okay. there with his little red Converse and his yuck. Drip he's God. Got the, he's got the backpack on like it's 2011. Oh my God. <laughs> Drip God. Second of all, he's really nice. So everyone loves him. No one expects anything from him because he's a mouse. But if he does anything exceptional, everyone's like, go Stuart Little. That's awesome Aww, that you did so that. so good. He can live in our society without any of the rules that we live by. He can pretty much do bad things. He'll get away with it. I know, because what are you going to do? Arrest a mouse? Wouldn't that be funny? Wait, oh. does he get arrested in it? <laughs> what? <laughs> what are you talking about? There's a scene where he has to get like broken out, and I swear he's in prison. Stuart Little does not get arrested in, in any of the movies. I think you're wrong. You got to be kidding me. You want me to look it up? Yeah. Does Stuart Little go to prison? Okay, I don't, I can't confirm or deny that it happens in the movie, but it happens in the book, I think. Okay, so we don't even know that. Comment down below if you're watching us on YouTube if you remember if Stuart Little went to jail. Actually, better yet, uh, comment down below. What you think he went to jail for? Oh my God, can you imagine those court drawings? It's just a, like a mouse. Like, no, <gasps> this big. that's funny and you're going to like him, regardless yeah. of what he does. Like, that's not something anyone's going to do. He doesn't have to use currency the way that we do because. Stuart Little asks you for something at this, like if he goes to 7 Eleven, he's just like, I'm gonna take this, okay? He's gonna be like, Yeah, you're Stuart Little. Like, I'm not gonna ask you to pay. That's weird. That's weird of me. So he also gets the Hollywood treatment. You tell, exactly. <laughs> you go ahead and tell Stuart Little he's gonna pay for those MMs. Actually, sorry, you kind of have to use money for that. He's like, Oh, um, I don't know. I, I never used money before. And the guy in line behind him is like, Are you serious, dude? You're gonna make Stuart Little? I'll pay for it. Wow. 
whatever. Like, so he gets that. And then the animal kingdom, he's not treated like other mice. Like, he's just like so much cooler. Imagine being a mouse that's not Stuart Little. <laughs> Are they like him, but they're not treated like him? Well, he has parents. They don't live like him. He lives in the human world and is fully... His parents live in a castle at a mini golf course. That's right. That's awesome. It was so cool. That was like my dream But are they kid. wearing clothes? They're nudists. Oh my God. <laughs> Mom, Dad, everything will be so much easier. You don't got to go fight in scraps and hide in the dark. Just put on clothes. <laughs> That's all it is. That's it. You speak English. You're in America, and everyone just wants you to wear clothes. And if you do the bare minimum, put on some shoes, <laughs> watch this. I just went to 7-Eleven, and the guy behind the line <laughs> paid for me. He paid for me. Fully paid. You guys have one weird thing that's holding you back. You, you're dumpster diving, going into garbage and hiding, put on shoes. That's, that's it. it. That's all you have to do. Mom, Dad, watch this. Walk outside right now. Don't wear shoes. Watch this. Go outside. Ah, it freaks out. Ah, our mouse. Put the kicks on. Watch this. All of a sudden, they start handing you tech decks, asking you to do tricks, paying for your lunch. You don't have to do anything. The plane was sick when he was in a little propeller plane. <gasps> yeah, he flew By the way, plane. he doesn't need a license to do any of that. He could just do it anytime he wants. Anytime he wants. He didn't even have to go to flying school. No, He didn't all. have to get his miles in at all. He's kind of just some retired guy. Maybe he's fire. Um, financial independence retire early. Maybe that's <laughs> maybe that's Stuart Little. Stuart Little did the fire. Yeah, method. he has. He probably just has property. To be honest with you, yeah, that's if they made him. But whatever. Well, his parents might own the mini golf course. That's true. That's a income generating property. It is. Um, wonder rated Stuart Little's life. Was that your wonder rated thing? Um, I I think <laughs> his lifestyle is wonder rated, and we need to appreciate how how well Stuart Little has it, and we need to aspire to be like Stuart Little in life. I'll try. People just don't envy him enough. It's not even wonder appreciated. <laughs> he has everything you want. That's so true. But Virtually does he have love? Anything. Absolutely he has love. Does he have a partner? He could easily. First of all, he could easily. <laughs> <laughs> don't ever question the little rat's riz, okay? Because that is on fire. Stuart it's unbelievable. Rizzle. Stuart Rizzle. <laughs> Him with the I need humanity. <laughs> Every dude in their head at least once a month goes and pretends they have a Spider-Man web slinger on them. Are you sure you're not projecting? I am one. Watch this. <laughs> if your man goes and just once a month, like in his own head, like he'll just be like, and just like pretend to do that on something. Sometimes I'll just be driving and I'll just look at like a freeway sign and I'm like, I don't want to be in a car. I just want, and I just fly. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. I look at in my room and I'm just like, oh, I need that. And I just fix that. Ooh, this would be, if I could just and then get up there. I do it all the time. The equivalent for me growing up was like pretending you're a mermaid in the pool. Yeah. That is a universal experience. We all did that. Every girl thought they were a mermaid. We all played mermaids at the pool. If you were at the pool, you were a mermaid. Hands down, no doubt about it. We all pretended to be mermaids. What is the cool part about it? Like you're in the water and you're just like, vibing. yeah. And you like, and then when you sit up on the rock, you're like, I hope no humans notice us. We were just mermaids. And then like, what kind of mermaid are you? I'm a fairy mermaid. What What are you? Oh, I'm a orange cream skull mermaid because you just say whatever you want. Orange you know? cream skull mermaid. <laughs> I mean, like, yeah, like, <laughs> rocket like, pop mermaid. That's awesome. I'm See, a magic mermaid. So what? Not even creative. Because <laughs> you guys aren't magic and I am. Magic mermaid. You you actually just, like, <laughs> gave them a deficiency by giving yourself, like, a privilege. Yeah. You're like, I'm a magic mermaid, so. So uh -oh. what are you guys doing? <laughs> you kind of just scaly. <laughs> You're a fish and I do things. You're just a fish. Yeah. And then we like pretend to have legs and then we jump in the pool and we're like, we have fin fins again. Do you do it all over again the next day? Like, oh, we're at the pool again. <gasps> Mermaids again. All right. Pretend you have legs You don't again. even say. No, we all. You just do. All the, all the little girls know. They already know. Yep. So if I was at a pool right now and I was like, okay, you guys go and pretended not to watch. They would start playing you mermaids? You would hear something about a mermaid. Really? For sure. For, at least for me, I didn't have one friend that I could go to a pool with that didn't already know the deal. You know the deal. 
<laughs> you know the deal. You know what we're doing. We're playing mermaids. She brings a torpedo, and she's like, guys, I got that. And you're like, ooh. Um, oh, uh, is that a mermaid torpedo? <laughs> that's great. Yeah, that's great. Um, that's Your torpedo mermaid. Torpedo mermaid. There you go. I'm so sorry. She's new. We have to. She's our neighbor. We have to bring her along. Hey. Torpedo mermaid. You're great. How about you go find the treasure, and then we'll go keep watch. And then just kind of watch her in the deep end for like an hour. <laughs> I'll throw quarters and you got to go find them. That actually sounds fun. Dude, I want to do that again. Throwing coin, throwing coins. Throwing into a, coins. Throwing coins. I just have a totally different guy now. <laughs> throwing coins inside of a water. Just a 20s guy. Imagine throwing coins inside of a pool, swimming pool. Watch the kid go crazy. Me and Aubrey used to do... Um, party entertainment yep and i could tell you right now some of the most fun i've ever had in my life oh and my gosh we did like safari themed kids birthdays the like, kids parties was my favorite yeah however i really did enjoy the murder mystery parties more yeah. because you would they're all adults and so they want to play and have fun with you but also they they don't know what level of cool they want to be at in front yeah, of other people. Yeah. So there was like, you got the people that are actually trying who, you know, hired us. Like the HR people love us because that's the people, they need this to be good. Mm -hmm. And then you have like the f folded hands, you know, C Corp. I already know this and I'm not even going to say. Yeah, the dude's the always guy, dead uh, wrong every time. The guys who would be like, this thing is convoluted. Con we actually had a, we had a guy say that to us. He was trying to be so cool. He didn't want to be caught dead, like no. being a part of the 1920s theme. He was like so cool for school. And he was like, this story is a little convoluted. I already guessed the end. And, and he was wrong. <laughs> guy got zonked at the end. And by the way, it was almost you, and you didn't even know you were the murderer. So <laughs> yeah. get out of here with you that. You didn't read your slip at all. No. Oh, but I did love. I don't know where to where to begin with this one. But me and Aubrey uh, used to be zombies. Well, that's a huge market. If you guys don't know, this is a real thing. You <gasps> could just be a zombie for people's parties. <laughs> And for all of October. We had never done it before. Never done it. We did z special effects zombie makeup at our house right before. We were like oh, looking up videos of zombies like right before we were like, because we, we just say yes to doing the gig. Yeah. We just, we just say yes to the gig. <laughs> remember when I, remember that Downton Abbey party? Oh yeah. yeah someone, wanted, <laughs> someone wanted Joe to be a butler yeah. for like hours. We thought it was kind of like an acting gig. Then you ended up actually buttling and like yeah. cleaning dishes for the party. So it's this very, very wealthy person. They brought like 60 ladies to go watch the movie Downton Abbey. And then they, we we had to stay at her house and wait until they got back. And she paid us for the whole time. And she's like, no, no, no. I want you, when, when we get here, you need to also be here. And the Downton Abbey movie was like really long. We were yeah. in her house for like three hours. Three hours. And then she got back. I had to like stand at the door and be like, "Welcome in," and like I really I did a whole thing. I studied it for like a week. I was like, "All right, you knew like a bunch of butler facts." Yeah, I don't now because yeah. <laughs> it's been a long time. But yeah, I did. The person who threw the party was like very particular about what she wanted, and she made yeah. sure she told Joe beforehand, "Your name is Whitby." <laughs> yeah, she <laughs> she progressively got more and more drunk throughout the night and just kept calling me Rigby. So you so like in another room, you could just hear this like faint lady's voice going Rigby. <laughs> Rigby, come in here, Rigby. I go in the other room. She'd be like, "Take her coat, Rigby." Didn't she also call you Winston? Yeah, she called me all kinds of stuff. <laughs> it's really weird at these parties. Oh my god, I'm gonna throw another one in there. Hold up, it's really weird at these parties because no one ever knows when you're supposed to stop being in character. But me and Aubrey <gasps> make it a yes. point. Me, me and Aubrey make it a point to never break character, mm -hmm. even if they're like, "Okay, it's just me and you." I'm like no this is weird now someone paid me to do this i'm not gonna stop and just be whatever which i guess is kind of weird but i don't know i thought it was kind of fun so i just kept staying in character there was this one lady who threw her own murder mystery party and she wrote the story so it was just a bunch of people in their like early 20s dressed as famous russians and then we would not break character the whole time i was rasputin there was this guy at the very end who was like, okay, well, do you do movies and shows too? Or do you guys do acting for a lot of other things? And I'm like, I do, I don't <laughs> like, and I just kept doing that. And then he was like. <laughs> you were like, I make potions or whatever. Like, you were I like. I make potions, <laughs> like, play, you know, whatever. I did like a whole thing. And then <laughs> I kept grabbing these little candies and they're called Milky Splash. 
so I kept grabbing these little candies. So if someone asked me a question I didn't know, because she wrote the story, so I didn't have all the info, yeah. I'd be like, mm, I think it's time for me to love a milk split. <laughs> I would just grab like a piece of candy and eat it. It's time for a milk splish. Mm. <laughs> what was the question again? It gives me a good five seconds to come up with an answer. And I'd like to think I'm pretty good at improvising, but this was hard, man. I didn't know, like, Russian history. I was like, I don't want to ruin her night. And I kept bringing it to this. There was this one friend of ours who was really good at, like, Russian history. Like, read, like, three books before we got there. I was like, how'd you even do that? He was so prepped. And I was like, prepped. why don't you go ask? And I kept pointing to him. He knows better than I. And I was like, hey, bro. He's like, why do you keep sending me? people it's time for a milk splash mm. wonder appreciated mm -hmm. county fairs i love the county fair i do love a good county fair i even fair. got a little twang when i said that i love oh the county fair God, you ain't nowhere <laughs> near the south but you're gonna do it anyway because everything sounds sweeter with a little bit of molasses there's a state fair and there's the county fair oh you're from Boo County County. Whoa, I just had a stroke. <laughs> I love a good funnel cake. Oh. I want to go on a date with you again and like mind a race and do like a 51st date and we go on a fair. Like every date is so sweet in the fairgrounds, is it not? Yeah. Because there's just something about getting into a ride together and having to sit close. Yeah. That was a, was a level of intimacy that I'm still chasing to this day. Is the... <laughs> Just go ahead and talk about our personal no, life. No, it's just, it's, you know, okay, first of all, okay, still Joe, chasing that. <laughs> okay, no, let me explain this. Because when you're a kid, everything is heightened, right? Yeah. Every experience that you have, it means so much more because you've had less experiences. It's just math, right? Yeah. So that feeling of like, not really ever, maybe you haven't even hugged this person yet or held hands before, right? And you sit close. And you get into the tilt-a-whirl and then when it whirls, and you, you barf. You barf in their face. <laughs> because those things are barf bags. Can you let me make this a sweet just moment? Super sweet and then just No. <laughs> yeah, maybe if you had choke a on my own giant cube. slushy right before that and like twelve corn dogs. Who didn't do that? You're at a county fair. Fifty slushies. <laughs> yeah. But like, you know, when when it tilts and then you actually kind of lean on the other person. The you're one like, that goes <gasps> The one that always has like a really poorly drawn Elvis Presley on the side that just goes in a circle <laughs> yeah. and it's always like rock and roll. Theme. It's like little 50s cars like going in a circle. Yeah. Yeah. That one is wonder appreciated. I do love that little thing. That's, it goes fast. That's and a leaner. You can, you lean on your friend in that one or you lean on your on your date. You lean on your date. You do. Okay. <laughs> What'd you barf up? I have some Blue's Clues mac and cheese. <laughs> oh my God. And two... Flintstone vitamins. Wait. Wonder appreciated. Jumping off of your barfing bit. Shaped macaronis and how they hold the sauce inside. Can I talk about this for a second? I will go to war if you tell me that the shaped macaronis weren't the best macaronis. How about, how about this? Putting the shape on the roof of your mouth and then suctioning your tongue to the top so that all mm. the sauce comes out. Yeah. The blue paw prints. The blue paw prints. Let's talk about this. The SpongeBob mac and cheese. The that way had so many crevices. The SpongeBob one specifically had so many crevices for cheese. Boom. The cheddar gets in every single one of those little holes. And guess what? Every single bite mm. was its own bowl of mac and cheese. It yep. was, it's magic. And then when you go back to the noodles, you're like, ooh. You mm -hmm. hope to get one little thing stuck in the straw. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But it just doesn't, you hope. It doesn't hold the cheese doesn't. in the same way. It doesn't caress the cheese between its crevices. And having the, the milk, isn't it kind of gross that mac and cheese is just kind of cheese cereal? Ew. Think about it, Ew, isn't I it? I actually got a chill down my arm. Some cheese cereal? <laughs> Instead of Cocoa Puffs, you're just putting Cheez-Its in a bowl with milk in it. I feel like Cheez-Its wouldn't be that bad, but cheese puffs, like Cheetos. Yeah, just put some cheese puffs. Cheeto milk. And some milk. Drink the Cheeto milk after. It's funny because that's not different than mac and cheese, really. Um, It's very different. It's a soft cooked pasta versus something crunchy, cheesy in a bowl. Get your hand off my neck right now. <laughs> 
<laughs> I love playing with just the listeners. Um, with just the lizards? <laughs> the listeners. Oh, I love playing with just the lizards. Wonder appreciated. Crows. What? No one would know this about them, but they're one of the most intelligent creatures. First of all, they remember human faces. They have an insane memory. So if if you're like rude to a crow, you know, you kick a crow, you know, be hella mean. Not only will he remember you, but his friends will remember you and his friends, not even the crow that you f with, the other crows will come attack you. Can you explain to me why this is wonder appreciated and not you're just threatening me with crows right now? <laughs> You're just basically telling me I should be afraid of crows. Yeah, you should be. What part is appreciated? Why do I appreciate it? I'll tell you why. <laughs> I don't want them now. <laughs> I'll tell you why. So most people overlook the fact that crows can remember faces. They defend each other really hardcore. Mm -hmm. But if you're nice to a crow, now let's take it and let's flip it. If you're nice to a crow and you feed it, and like you become buddies with it, they're actually one of the animals that's known to form extremely strong bonds with humans. Dude, you know what? I believe that humans and other animals should live a little bit more closely together because I think it'd be sick as hell to go to a bar or like a party and everyone has their animal and it's like, oh, that's, that's yeah, Ephraim, I... he's got a toucan. And like, oh, that's Joe's monkey and like, <laughs> That's sick. Joe pulls up at the basketball court. Quah! Like five crows behind him. And I just go, hey, I'll see you guys later. And they, go, woof, woof, woof. And they all just go watch me play while they're up in the tree. And I'm just like, all right, time to go. And then you call yourself Blackheart. <laughs> I'm Blackheart. <laughs> and you're the guy with the crows. And I'm the crows. If I was just like, you know, some guy in jeans and like a hoodie and just like got crows on me. That's sick. <laughs> cool skin. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our Patreon. Guess what you get every month? Live streams. Vlogs. And access to the Discord, which is crack a baby. Give me some of that friendship circles. And if you don't like any of that stuff, it also helps support this podcast. So at the very least, it's basically just saying, hey, I like this. Keep it going. <laughs> I do like Stuart Little. I want more. Patreon's a good way of doing that. Love you guys. Thank you so much. Wonder appreciated submission from one of our top tier patrons. That's right, one of the perks of being a wallflower. This one appreciated submission comes from a top tier patron named Lindsay. Long time Lindsay. Long, Long time, time Lindsay. Lindsay. <laughs> That's what we call them. I'm gonna be materialistic for a second, but voice controlled plugs. I can get forgetful sometimes, so plugging in a lamp or a sound machine or a light into a voice controlled plug and all I have to do is ask Alexa or open my app and I can turn it off that way, it's been a life changer. Definitely improved my life. Like if I'm reading before bed and I have my twinkle lights on, I don't want to get up and turn them off. I lose my sleepiness by doing that. <laughs> I just get on my phone and hit turn off or ask Alexa to turn them off and I'm asleep. It's been awesome. Same for when I wake up. I have them programmed to turn on when my alarm goes off. Honestly, I feel like that classic Disney original movie, Smart House. Like full-on slam dunk defunct Smart House. Lindsay, you are talking to the man himself. <laughs> yeah, this is like way too specific. Joe is the voice activated light. I'm a voice activated wizard. Yeah. I turn all the controls on my computer as well. Cause mm -hmm. I have the, so you could turn accessibility and do voice command on your computer. And I do not type a damn thing at all. I love voice command stuff. I'm an audio learner. I say things better than I can type them. I'm super slow at typing. And also, yes, yeah, stuff around the house. I've automated, dude, don't even get me started about the automation stuff. I go off. I have like certain times of day, I have Lexi. I'm not gonna say her name because I don't yeah, wanna turn Lexi. yours on. But like, so I have Lexi, uh, if it's five o'clock on a Friday, then it'll tell me it's Funky Monkey Friday and we'll like play some monkey sounds and it'll go up. Like I have specific things for my days. When I leave, I, it knows when I leave, it turns certain things off because I have the location set on my phone. The, the bedtime thing, you're so right. Like losing your sleepiness by going up to turn off the light is like so integral. Like Dude. that is so important. Also, um, me and Aubrey have this thing where our lights are set to turn off at 11 p.m., yeah. which we're always up beyond then. But it's kind of like, a god saying okay 
<laughs> it's yeah. time to at least wind down yeah which is actually really nice so if you do it for like self-discipline like turning lights off when you don't want to be in that room yes if, like, that's your xbox room like turn your xbox off you could do it with um plugs too There's yeah you can smart plugs and things like that but um but oh my doing gosh. that to like get your schedule really tight and like force you to start winding down has been such a like a godsend yeah i i don't want to go off the tangent too much because i will talk forever but i will <laughs> yeah. say look into automation for the household stuff beyond just the light stuff how much oh. time and how much of your life you can save without even thinking about it like i know that a lot of people are like oh you know all these bits and bobs and all this technology coming in and like it's so much easier to just click off the light like just shaving off those few seconds or like just making it so you don't have to stand up and lose your sleepiness long time lindsay thank you for your submission long time lindsay you Love are ya. talking to the absolute smart house wizard yeah I, i'm getting to the point where i even talked to my friends about it i was like i want to have a drone grab me a beer and i am so close i need enough free time to figure it out <laughs> yeah. but i know exactly how i'm gonna do it you need tinker time i need tinker time Ooh, i just made that up tinker time yeah i love tinker time Ooh, you got my brain spinning <laughs> I don't You're know thinking what thinking all about I, tinker time. I'm thinking about tinker time, thinking about using the word tinker time, mm -hmm. the phrase, I mean. Yeah. Wow. I just need some tinker time. It's also like a nicer way to say like I got to really sort some shit out. Yeah, I need like, some tinker time. I just need a little bit of tinker time with that. Dude, hey. sick. <laughs> If you don't start using tinker time, you're doing it wrong. Like, it work. Where are we at with the progress on the, the reports here? Actually, I just need a little bit of tinker time to get uh, to get it going. Boom. It's a softener. Who is going to tell you that tinker time is not worth it? That person is not worth your tinker time. Mm -hmm. How about that? A tyrant is going to get mad at tinker time. <laughs> the tyrant was mad at tinker time. The tyrant was mad with tinker time. I tried, I tried. A terrible man, a terrible man with tinker time. He's crying, he's crying, he's crying, he's crying. <laughs> wow. You like that? There was yeah. some fun there. There was, there was fun there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, guys. Well. We did it. We did it. Episode <laughs> 7. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulate. Congratulations, Congratulations to us. We made it to the end of episode seven. Thank you guys so much for joining. We were happy to have you. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit that notification button. And if you're listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, hit that follow button on there. Follow us. Maybe give us a little rating. Ooh, ooh, a five star rating. Give a little rating. Give a little rating. And that would mean a lot to us. If you're liking the podcast, we appreciate the love. And we appreciate you even listening. And thank you for being here. Peace. Bye. Shout out to the top tier patrons. Woo -woo. We love you. Here it goes. Aaliyah Athman. Anna Cantu. Benjamin Samuels. Delia Joe. Devin Holloman. Dylan Miss Licky. Explorer Nora. Guillermo. Jasmine May. Lee Mayu. Lindsay. May May. Michael Williams. MP Chiefs Cheever. Noel Niemeyer. Nick Zenia. And Very Tired Egg.